And you're very welcome indeed back to our programme, which is coming to you uh, this morning from Glen Cree. And I suppose one of the the names most associated uh, with this place is that of Una O'Higgins O'Malley, who was a founding member of the Glen Cree uh, Reconciliation Centre. Una, good morning to you. Good morning, Mary. So, congratulations on 30 years. Yes, isn't it wonderful? Yes, it is. Yes. Now, will you remind people of your own background first? Your father, your grandfather. Oh, yes. Well, I was five months old when my father was killed. His father had been killed three years before that, four years before that. So... um, Can you remind people why? Well, my father was Minister for Justice and uh, Vice President of the Irish Free State Executive. And uh, my grandfather was his father, and that's why he was killed. Just because he was his father. father, And your father had taken a tough line uh, with the IRA around that time. Yes, he had. Uh, Well, the whole government had, um, the Free State government had been faced with uh, considerable challenges. Uh, One deputy murdered and a senator injured coming out of Doyle And that led to the government taking a, a very radical step and executing four prisoners, four IRA prisoners. As it happened, one of those had been my father's best man. And my father was not, behind the scenes, he was not at all in favor of this decision. But once the cabinet made the decision, he carried the can for it right. in the door. And Kevin O'Higgins was, was shot on his way to Mass, was it? That's right, yes. Right. So clearly, you don't have any recollection of that as a five-month-old. No, no. But the, the consequences of it on a personal level for your mother and the family went yeah. on. Yes, and oh, yeah, oh, indeed they did. And uh, what your contributor, Tom Roberts, a little while ago said... Um, it, it fits my position completely. He said he didn't want the next generation to suffer in the same way as he had done. And I suppose, although I didn't know my father, I feel I did suffer quite a lot. In what ways? Uh, well, you know, even at the present day, when, and I'm a grandmother many times over, but when I look at a little child having fun with their father or something like that, it, You know, what I'm trying to get at, Marion, is that the funeral is over, the cameras have gone away and whatever, but the loss is there for all a person's lifetime. Even when they're as old as I am, they can still feel it. I heard that what happened afterwards was that somebody who had been involved in that group went and danced on the grave. Well, whether he did or not, he certainly boasted to uh, to a, a man called Harry White, who was a Republican, and he wrote a biography, or rather, his biography was written. And in that, Harry White says that Archie Doyle danced on my father's grave. And that somehow, I mean, I had thought up till then I was a comparatively... Um, peaceful and forgiving person but I just I mean that that really sent me now and I suppose I was 60 something when that happened and um, I got overtaken by a huge kind of black lava is all I can describe of, of kind of well whether it was hate whether it was despair I'm not sure what it was but it blotted me out and I thought I'm I just got an inspiration as I was going into the church on the Good Friday of that year, and I I realized that what I had to do was have a mass said for all these people together, for my father and the three assassins who were named in that book. Plus, I mean, one of them being the dancing man, etc. He spoke to them, did he? Yes. So, Roger Gannon says, yes. And what, what did he say to them? He said, this will have to be the end of the killing. He said, I know who you are and why you've done it, and I forgive you, but this will have to be the end of the killing. 
You know, the word forgiveness can trip off the mouth fairly easily, but but it's a very difficult thing, isn't it? I mean, it, it, in a way, I, I had certainly the soft side of it because, you know, as a kid, I mean, a little one coming along, you, you, you just know there's such a thing called forgiveness and you just kind of get on with it. But I don't know what it could have been like for my mother or grown-ups at the time. An ordinary woman came then, Una O'Higgins O'Malley, ordinary and yet remarkable, with a radical streak and an open heart. She'd had her own troubles, of course, her own violent and tragic losses, but she transformed them and they helped her forge a new path, one of reconciliation and forgiveness. For in 1974, an idea was born. No more than a feeling at first, the mere hint of a possibility, a creaking gate, an opening door, a thought that you might come here to Glencree, away from it all, the madness and the violence and the unforgiving streets. And an idea was born that one could bring together the divided communities, the old enemies, gather them together so that they might tell each other stories, circle around to glimpse each other's deeply felt hurts. And they did. And their stories were heard, built bridges and then crossed them. I remember one little girl, um, she had to stand on the hot pipes down below in the old building to see out the window. And she had what at that time were a very new fashion of little ankle socks with fringe around and I knew that that was the time. And she looked out the window and she said, do you mean I can come here whenever I want? And she was gazing at the beauty of the valley. And I found it a very touching moment. She wasn't more than 12 or 13, I think. But I think we believed all along that something about the whole area and the people driving up here, coming here, would find themselves in a different mode of thinking, that they would they might take a fresh look at what was going on around them and could be better suited to, to um, listening to each other, which we discovered was frightening right for both for ourselves and for our guests. And uh, that the, the, the surroundings were challenging us all to think big. I think that's why we selected this place rather than more cozy and better set up. Which were suggested at the time. 